In the previous tutorial, I explained to you how to set up Minikube, that's a local version of, it, of your Kubernetes on your local system, deploy a Spring Boot application to Kubernetes cluster, and also be able to access the Kubernetes on Minikube dashboard locally, as you can see right here uh, on my system. Now we are going to also do something similar, but this time we are going to be doing it using deployment.yaml file and also service.yaml file. So, in summary, we are going to be deploying a Spring Boot application to Kubernetes cluster, but this time we are going to be doing this using a configuration file called deployment.yaml. Actually, the name, uh, you can always use any name you like. So, I'm going to close this. And we also have the step-by-step -step, uh, in my website. So, this is the step I'm going to be following in this tutorial. Prerequisite for this class is that you have some basic knowledge of Docker, right? You should be able to create a Docker file, you should be able to uh, create a Docker image of your application. All right, so let's get started right now. So the first thing I want to mention is you can subscribe to my channel. If you are joining for the first time, please subscribe so that you don't miss any updates from me. And if you have any challenges whatsoever, if you have a question, uh, comment, please leave me a comment in the comment box below. And all the parts of this tutorial like the initial part, you can find it in the description of, description box of this video. Now, the first thing we need to do is to create a Docker image of our application. Again, you need to have Docker installed. For sure, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to repeat that because you already know. So, if I go to say Docker uh, images here, you can see that we have these two uh, basic images. Now, you may not see anything or you may see only one, which is a mini cube. You don't have to worry. So the first thing we want to do is to uh, write this command that gives uh, Docker, that gives Kubernetes access to our Docker repository. All right. So I'm going to say eval mini cube uh, Docker m. All right, so after this now, we are going to build the image of our application. So I'm going to simply say docker build docker build minus t spring boots kubernetes 1.0 all right, so this is the command to build our Docker image. So if I now play my console and say uh, Docker images, I should have, I create all of this, but you, you don't have to worry about this. You have the, the Spring Boot Kubernetes, that's the name of the image we just created right now. I don't know why it's saying 25 hours ago, but we created this images just now. Okay. Now comes the most interesting part. You need to create a, de a deployment. A deployment is a file, a deployment.yaml file. A deployment.yaml file is a configuration file that specifies how your application is going to be deployed and how it's going to run inside the Kubernetes cluster. So in the deployment.yaml file, you're going to specify the kind, which is deployment, the name of the deployment, the app so this you don't have to worry about take note of the replicas the replicas have to be have to be three okay it can also be four that replicas simply means replicas that is uh, how many replicas of your application or how many containers or how many copies of your application is going to be running inside the cluster so these replicas will actually it will actually create three nodes so when we look at the dashboard you can see to create three Three pods. All right, so now I'm going to create a deployment file. So I'm going to go to src main resources and inside the resources, I'm going to say new file and I'm going to call it deployment.yaml. Now, the name you give does not matter, but give it a name that shows that this is a deployment uh, file because sometimes later we are going to create a service.yaml file. This file has the same extension, but you need to give a name that differentiates uh, what this file is all about. 
So I'm going to copy the content. Now the content for deployment is quite intuitive and it's similar. So what you can do is simply, if you are using a different name for your application, simply change the name from here. And also the image have to be this, the name here, the image, the name of the container, the name of the image and pull policy it's going to first look, look into the uh, local Docker registry to look for this image, and if it doesn't find it, it's going to look at Docker Hub. So that's why we have the pull policy to be if not present, okay? And the container port is 8080. So there's the ports. The ports, the application is running inside the container, right? So if you specify the, the IP address of the cluster and specify the port, this container port, then you can access this application, but you need to expose it first using the service. So for now, create this deployment.yaml file. Now, after creating the deployment.yaml file, you need to now create the actual deployment. Basically, you need to actually use the deployment.yaml file to deploy your application to the local Kubernetes cluster. So, I'm going to come here and play my console. So, I'm going to now deploy now using this deployment file. And to do that, you simply run the command kubectl apply minus f. Um, actually, I'm going to navigate inside the resources folder which contains this deployment.yml file. So I'm going to say cd src main resources, resources, enter, sorry, type. All right, so I'm going to now say kubectl apply minus f deployment.yml. Okay, now this application is deployed to Kubernetes cluster, and we have three replicas have been created. How do I know? The first thing I'm going to do is to say kubectl get deployments. So it's going to tell me about the deployment, uh, which is says three nodes have been created. So three containers have been deployed. Three of them are available 20 seconds ago. What are the names of these containers? So I'm going to say kubectl get pods and now we have the three pods three of them are up and running if you delete any of them uh, it will start up immediately so if you think about it if i let's say if i copy this one i should be able to maybe try to delete it so take notice end by 6 jm9 so i'm going to say cube ctl delete pods and specify the name of the pod and it says port deleted, which is this port. But if I say kubectl get port, you see that we also have three ports again, because it's called the, the, the process of self-healing, meaning that if you kill a port, it's going to wake up as the different port immediately, which, which guarantees that your application have high availability. Okay, so now we have the applications up and running. So if you want to uh, see, actually um, that this Spring Boot application actually runs inside your container. Simply use kubectl logs and specify the name of the pod or the name of the container, if you will. I'm going to say kubectl get uh, kubectl uh, logs, I think, and specify the name of the pod, enter, and you can see that it gives us exactly the information we have when we an application starts up, all right? So our application is running inside three replications of so this application is running inside three different pods. Okay, so now I want to expose this application to so that it can be accessible from the outside. And to do that, we need a service. So I'm going down now. We are going to create a service. A service is also, first we need to create the service.yml file. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it service.yml. So actually, um, so it's going to be new file. It's going to be service.yml. Okay. Again, the content of this file is like this. We can modify it a little bit, but 
take note that you have to be careful what you change. I've added some comments to explain the parts of this file. I have a kind service. Remember, in deployment, it's deployment. The kind is deployment. You can change your replicas. That's for deployment. But in this case, now this is the service. Okay. All right. So the target port inside the container, uh, inside the container 8080, outside the container 8080 type is no port, and the app is this. Okay. So this, the name of this service is this. All right. So it's basic uh, configuration. Here, so it's quite easy. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we now want to uh, expose. Remember, we did expose in the previous tutorial, but this time we're going to expose the 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 service using this this service that was YAML file. So I'm going to say kubectl apply minus f service service dot yaml and it creates the service, it creates the service for us. So I'm going to simply say, um, it creates a service, I, I can actually say kubectl get services, kubectl get services, and we have the service created for us right here. Now I explained in my, in my website here that to assess the application, we can use a combination of the internal IP, internal IP and the node ports. Let's see. So how do we get internal IP? I can use um, kubectl, this command kubectl to get additional details. Get node minus zero wide. And I have the node, yeah. So we have only one node and we have, there's no external IP. So we use internal IP and the node uh, us. Okay, so to get the actual service uh, URL, so what I'm going to do, um, yeah, so let's find my console. So I can say uh, minikube, me, uh, let's say kubectl get services, and I'm going to use this. Actually, um, this cluster IP and the node port, but so you can play around with it. Try the cluster IP and the port, the, the node port here, uh, in external, internal. So, but for now, to get the actual URL, you simply use the name of the service here and simply, sorry, give me one second. So, I'm going to copy this. So, it's going to be Minikube service and specify the name of the service and hit the enter key. So it's going to now start the service. So you can now see, uh, so I'm going to hit this. Okay, so it's, this is internal and this is external. So I'm going to click on here. Okay, so it works. So it says, um, welcome to Spring Boot with Kubernetes. So the application is running right inside Kubernetes cluster. And again, if you want to see the dashboard, now we can see that we can we have two, three replicas. So I'm going to say uh, mini Q dashboard. And now it opens up the dashboard for us, as you can see right here. So I'm going to move this this way. Okay. All right. So you see the ports here. There are three of them. We have one is working, initialized, ready, post scheduled. Uh, replication set, so you can play around to check what is all this. They have this deployment, it's fine. Um, everything is perfectly okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for now. So these two lessons are prerequisite for actually the next part of our Fleet MS version 2, that's part 54, where we are going to be now deploying Fleet MS to, um, to Kubernetes box. I think we need to also learn how to deploy Spring Boot with MySQL to Kubernetes. So I'm going to be stopping here. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. If you have any challenges whatsoever, please uh, do leave me a comment to let me know. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.